So as you may know, the Nintendo 3DS eShop will be going offline in March of 2023. But you really only have 4 months to make purchases with a credit card. After that, only eShop cards will work up until August 29th. What this means is Nintendo is effectively closing the door on hundreds of digital-only 3DS releases that won't ever be accessible for its customers, and that is a real shame. Now I've made a video talking about why this is a bad move by Nintendo, but I'm not going to reiterate it here. If you're interested, check out that video, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But moving on, Nintendo states that in the foreseeable future it will be possible to re-download all your digital games and DLC. But the question is, for how long? We only need to look at the past. Nintendo closed the Wii Shop in 2019, and in 2022, as of the making of this episode, it is possible to re-download your games as long as your Wii is not formatted, because formatting the system will delete the entitlement certificates. In other words, you must have the original Wii that you downloaded the games from. If your Wii breaks down and you purchase another, then there is simply nothing that can be done other than modding the system. Nintendo states in their FAQ that re-downloads of previously purchased titles will be available for the foreseeable future. But keep in mind that if your 3DS breaks down and you replace it with a different system, you may not be able to re-download any previously purchased games. The good news from all this is that a Nintendo 3DS is very easy to mod, and you can simply take control of your own game library effectively making backup copies of all your games and storing them away for safekeeping. If you decide that you want to reinstall your games after Nintendo no longer allows for re-downloads, then you simply can. Now of course, what this means is you can simply just download any 3DS ROM off the internet and install on any modded 3DS hardware. And this is because the entire library of 3DS games has already been dumped and preserved. And for many, Nintendo will leave you no choice. You either have to emulate, and for the purposes of this video, we are going to mod our 3DS and show you what's capable. Now as always, rather than creating a modding guide on the channel, which will almost certainly change after May of this year, I'm going to direct you to a website, 3ds.hacks.guide, which has a step-by-step -step walkthrough of what you need to do to perform a soft mod on your 3DS. For example, my 3DS here is a North American with the latest firmware 11.15.0. So this guide is directing me to use an exploit known as Seedminer. And this is the most up-to-date exploit for the 3DS unless you are running an older firmware, which in that case, there are separate step-by-step -step guides there as well. The Seedminer exploit will walk you through creating an encryption key that's unique to your 3DS. And this will be used to install a custom firmware later on. Seedminer will also require you to download Pokemon Picross, which is free on the eShop to work. Now, you're probably wondering, does this mean that this exploit will be effectively blocked after the 3DS shop goes offline? The answer is no. I've seen a lot of talk that you'll no longer be able to exploit a 3DS, but don't panic. The 3DS scene has been around for many years, and there are other older 3DS exploits going all the way back to NTR hacks, which you may recall required a copy of Cubic Ninja. So what will likely happen here at this point is that once the 3DS eShop becomes unavailable, this guide will revert you back to the use of NTR boot. This method is also outlined on the 3DS hacks.guide under the alternative method sections. This NTR boot requires the use of a DS flashcard such as the R4i Gold that you've probably seen before, but it does not require the use of the eShop. Seedminer is currently the preferred option as it's free, and obviously a DS flashcard will cost you some money out of pocket, but who knows? Maybe this is fuel for the community to discover a new exploit that doesn't require any connectivity to the eShop or a DS flashcard. But the takeaway here is, don't panic. Even after the eShop closure, you'll be able to soft mod any 3DS on the market as you were previously. So now that we have our 3DS finally modded, we can start to take control of our game library. And one of the really cool features of a modded 3DS is the ability to back up your entire digital game library, store it somewhere else for safekeeping, and then reuse it at a later stage, just in case Nintendo decides that they're not going to allow you to re-download any games in the future. So assuming you followed the guide and modded your 3DS, you should have a custom firmware installed known as Luna 3DS. 
You'll also have apps that are installed on your menu, such as the Homebrew Launcher and FBI. FBI is the main tool that will be used to install 3DS packages that will live on the menu. And the reason why the application is known as FBI is because it's an installer for files that have the extension .cia. Simple. So what we want to do is rip our 3DS collection into CIA files so we can then use FBI to install them on this 3DS or any other modded 3DS at a later date should we choose to do so. Rather than have Nintendo tell us that we can't download our games anymore, we can take matters into our own hands. So this is my 3DS and I have a library of some games that I've downloaded for the handheld. These are all purchased on the 3DS eShop. I recently asked the Twitter community what some of their digital only 3DS titles from the eShop were and I got some really great responses and I got to admit some of these games I've totally slept on. And I'm going to talk about some recommendations that I have later in the episode just in case you're looking to purchase some more 3DS titles before the shop goes down. But for now, let's assume that you have a ton of purchases and you want to back them up. Then the best way to do it easily is to use a tool that's already installed as a part of a modded 3DS known as God Mode 9. God Mode 9, as the name suggests, is a powerful tool that will allow you to modify many parts of the 3DS. Things, for example, that were locked behind permissions. It also has a file browser that allows you to access, copy, delete, rename, and access all of the 3DS partitions. But what we are going to use God Mode for today is to back up our games, and this is really easy to do. Let's walk through it. So to access God Mode 9, hold down the start button while you power on your 3DS. Now from here, you'll see the God Mode 9 splash screen and you'll be dumped into the file manager. You'll need to make a note of where your 3DS digital games are installed, but let's assume they are on the SD card, which is generally the place where the digital library of games are installed. Now using the D-pad, move down to the option that says Sys NAND SD. Then hold down the right shoulder button and press A and then simply open Title Manager. This will browse the SD card for any installed digital games that you have on your 3DS. And as you can see, this is my list of games here. Now let's assume that we want to back up Pushmo from this list. I mean, it's an awesome game that everyone should play and should be able to keep forever if they've already purchased it. Select the game, then press A, then select Manage Title. Now select Build CIA Standard. What this will do is dump the game to a .cia file on your SD card. Now depending on the file size of the game, this may take up to a few minutes. You also want to make sure that you have enough space on your SD card to make a backup. And that's it. Now let's go ahead and back up another game, 3D Fantasy Zone. Press A, select Manage Title, and then select Backup CIA Standard. I should mention that you can also use God Mode 9 to dump physical games on cartridge as well in a similar fashion. Now if we take out our SD card out of the 3DS and insert it into our PC, in the GM9 Out folder, you can see the games that we've dumped already. And at this point, you can simply back up these games for safekeeping on the cloud, on your Google Drive, it doesn't matter. Now the really cool part is, if you ever need to reinstall these titles, let's say your 3DS broke down and you got a new one and Nintendo won't allow you to re-download these games on a different piece of hardware due to the entitlement system, then you simply need to mod that 3DS install FBI and install these .cia files and that's it, your library is now preserved. Of course, this is not ideal, but it works and you don't have to worry about the Nintendo 3DS eShop ever again. So to wrap up, I asked the community what their favorite 3DS digital only titles were and I got a ton of responses. Now, many of these I've already known about, but I will say that there are some that I'd never even heard of before. So I decided to check out a couple myself. I can definitely recommend to anyone who's looking to purchase some 3DS game before the store closures to take a look at these. Pushmo could be the best 3DS eShop game I've ever played, maybe even the best 3DS game on the system. Developed by Intelligent Systems, it's an excellent sliding block puzzle game. With over 250 levels, you'll be pushing, pulling and jumping on blocks to rescue children who are trapped inside playground equipment. The game is one of the most addictive games I've played in a long time, and you can tell that it was clearly meant for the 3DS in mind. 
Once you beat the tutorial levels, you can even use the Pushmo Studio to create your own and share them with your friends via QR code. Honestly, if there's only one 3DS eShop game that you can afford before the closure, then I would recommend Pushmo to anyone. Rusty's Real Deal Baseball is a free to play set of mini games, all with a baseball theme. You get access to a free demo to try it out, and you'll want to purchase some of the mini games after that because it's really fun to play and a game that I definitely recommend. One game that I can honestly say I'd never heard of before was Crimson Shroud. This is a turn-based RPG that lends itself more to tabletop D&D rather than traditional JRPGs, but if you're a fan of games such as Vagrant Story on the Sony PlayStation, then this game is right up your alley. It's an absolute must purchase if you're a fan of RPGs. Then there's the 3D Sega Ages game, which is a little more my style. Space Harrier and Fantasy Zone are my picks, but you can't really go wrong with any of them. They are beautifully ported to the 3DS by the Masters M2, and the use of 3D is exceptional, especially when it comes to the Superscaler games. These are cheap on the eShop and definitely worth a look. Other games that I checked out were 3D Excitebike and Kirby from the NES. These games are fantastic ways to play the old classics from the NES era. There's also Attack of the Friday Monsters A Tokyo Tale, another game that I'd never even heard of before. It's a really neat little adventure exploration life simulation game that I absolutely fell in love with. And then there is the Ace Attorney series. Dual Destinies is the fifth game in the series that has never released a physical release outside of Japan and another game that I really enjoyed. If you're a fan, you probably already know about this one, but sadly will be unavailable once the eShop disappears. Now these are only a small handful and I got many recommendations of many other 3DS eShop games to try out. But I did want to thank everyone who responded to my tweet and gave me some good recommendations. I'll be sure to check more out over the coming weeks. Once a eShop has gone down, once the eShop has gone down, I think really the intentions have been signaled that Nintendo is no longer interested in the 3DS. So really, it's up to you now to you know decide how you want to proceed and you know enjoy these games in the future. But for now, guys, we are going to leave it here for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.